Hello everyone and welcome to Discovery Reading. My name is Marie and today we are going to be reading books about animal tracks. Um, okay, so the first book that we are going to be reading is called Who Was Here by Mia Posada. And we are given permission to read this by, let's see if I can remember, Mill Book Press. Okay, so this book is called Who Was Here by Mia Posada. The huge furry paws uh, of an animal sank into the soft mud of the river bank, leaving deep footprints with dagger sharp claws. The beast lumbered on, a fish snared in its jaws. Who was here? A bear. This is a black bear. Bears have five toes, just like humans. With a, with a long claw on each toe, bears are heavy, so their tracks are often pressed deeply into the ground. Male black bears can weigh up to 400 pounds. Some are more than six feet tall when they stand on their hind legs. That's as tall as an adult man. They live in forests and eat mostly plants, but they also catch fish in streams and rivers. A hunter traveling by full moon's glow left paw tracks in fresh forest snow. Racing through the night with its pack, chasing its prey, teeth bared in attack. Who was here? What animals travel in packs? What do you, who, what do you think? Oh, there are the tracks right there, but we have a different set of tracks right here. Nearby are the tracks of the prey that fled, branching antlers crowning its head. With heavy hooves pounding the ground, it escaped into the forest with barely a sound. So we have an animal that made these tracks chasing this animal that made these tracks. But what do you guys think it is? Really fast before I turn the page. A wolf and a moose. This is a gray wolf. Wolf tracks look like huge dog tracks. Wolves and dogs are members of the same animal family. Gray wolves live together in packs or groups. They are strong, long distance runners. A pack may travel 25 miles a night to hunt animals such as deer, beaver, and rabbits. There's the wolf. And a moose. Moose are the largest type of deer. Male moose weigh more than 1,400 pounds. They have wide cloven or split hooves that help them walk in deep snow. They also use their strong hooves to defend themselves against predators. Only male moose have antlers. The moose antlers will soon fall off for the winter, but new ones will grow in the spring. There's the moose and the wolf. And that is why I am sitting upstairs in front of our, uh, well, this is an elk, and then our wolves right there. A long-tailed jumper in the arid outback hopped through the dry brush and left his track. On strong legs, it bounds about, while snug in its pouch, its baby peeks out. Who was here? So what animal has a pouch and jumps around? What do you think? What animal made those tracks? Let's see. It's kind of weird tracks. Kangaroo. This is a red kangaroo, the largest type of kangaroo. Red kangaroos grow about six feet tall and weigh about 200 pounds. Their feet are long and narrow, but very strong. Thanks to their powerful feet and legs, kangaroos can jump more than 25 feet uh, in one leap. They use their long tails to help them balance while jumping and they can hop as fast as 35 miles per hour. That's pretty fast. Let's see. 
The African sun at bright daybreak reveals huge footprints at the edge of the lake. Underwater's this, underwater's this animal's favorite place where the hefty giant moves with grace. You see that giant footprint right there? It likes to live, uh, it likes to be underwater. Yeah, oh, somebody said King Rogu. Good job. <laughs> Who is here? Oh, and then we have another set of tracks right here. Long narrow toes left a second track. This animal rides on the other's back. It munches on insects flying by and soars into the grassland sky. What do you think? What animals are these? Hyperactive koalas. <laughs> Let's see. A hippo and an egret. Hippos have four toes on each foot. The toes have webbing between them to help them move easily in the water. Hippos are huge. They can weigh as much as 8,000 pounds. Uh, but in the water, they can, they can bounce and even float. Hippos live in Central and Southern Africa. They spend most of the day underwater but come out at night to feed on grass. This bird is a cattle egret. It has four narrow toe, it has four narrow branching toes on each foot. Cattle egrets can be found all over the world. They like to live near large grazing animals like hippos, which disturb and stir up insects that egrets eat. Egrets often perch on the backs of larger animals. So we have the hippo on the side and then the egret. It's the egret. The white bird on the, that likes to sit on the hippo's back. Okay. What next? A sawtooth swimmer left uh, left this trail, dragging its flat paddle-shaped tail. Its family works as a busy team, piling sticks to build a dam in the stream. Who was here? <laughs> what animal do you think that is? A beaver. Beavers have five long toes. Their hind feet are webbed to help them swim. Their long flat tails help them paddle through the water. When they are alarmed, beavers flap the water with their tails. This loud sound warns other beavers of danger. Beavers have strong, sharp front teeth that they use to cut down a tree in minutes. They use tree trunks, branches, and mud to build dams and rivers, and also to build their lodges or homes. Beavers eat bark, twigs, and leaves. There's the beaver. Yep, good job. Okay, let's go back and look at the beaver track. As you see here, the beaver track, you see that they have webbed feet, which is very helpful for swimming in the water, which is very important because beavers live in the water. Okay. Let's see, round footprints left by two-toed feet pressed into the sand in the desert's heat. This animal lives with water, without water for days, traveling under scorching sun rays. So this animal lives in the desert. Who was here? In between, a line curves through the sand with a track with no footprint or with, with no print of foot or hand. This creature lies buried just out of sight, its fangs ready to strike a poisonous bite. All right, so we have two more animals. This one made this track right here, and then we have another track right here going down the middle. What kind of animal would leave a track with no footprints? A camel and a snake. Camels with one hump are called dromedary camels. Camels have two large toes that spread out wide to keep them from sinking into the sand. People ride camels and use them to carry supplies in the deserts of North Africa and the Middle East. Camels' large humps store fat. Uh, the fat gives them energy when they don't have food or water. This allows them to travel a long way without eating or drinking. The snake is a horned viper. Horned vipers grow about two feet long. They are venomous. Uh, they are venomous. They often bury themselves in the sand to surprise their prey. 
They move across the sand in a side winding motion, leaving an S shaped leaving S shaped lines as tracks. There's the terminal. And then you can see the viper there kind of. Tracks on the wet rainforest floor reveal a predator was here before. Whiskers twitching, climbing, creeping, silently stalking, then pouncing and leaping. Who was here? Let's see, what do you think those tracks belong to? A jaguar. Jaguar footprints look like giant cat prints. Like most members of the cat family, jaguars have sharp claws that they can retract or pull in when they don't need them. So their tracks do not usually show claw marks, but jaguars often scratch trees with their claws to mark their territory, a warning to other jaguars to stay away. That's it, the end. And then it just has things that you can do, things that you can look for if you want to look for animal tracks or clues that you can look for. I'll read them. I'll read them off. It says, there are many clues to look for. You should, you should look for how many toes does the track have? Um, do they look like tracks from paws or do they look like tracks from hooves or cloven hooves? Cloven means that there are two, um, it's split in half down the middle. Are any claws showing? Does it have fingers? Uh, how big is the track? So those are all things that you can look for when you are trying to figure out what animal the track belongs to. All right, so I have some cool things to show you. Um, first, let's look at this. So this is the foot from an elk. And you can see it does have cloven hooves, so there is a split going down the middle, and there's two different, oh, there's two parts of the hoof. Um, and then they have this little, these little parts on the back right here. So yeah, this is from an elk. It is pretty big. I have, there's an elk behind me right there. So that's what an elk looks like, and this is what their foot looks like. So if you want to maybe um, draw, what you think the track would look like. That'd be kind of fun if you want to do that. Um, so yeah, it's an elk foot. I'll show you some other feet. Let's see. Here we have, oh, this is from a giraffe. I'm assuming it's from a baby giraffe because it's not very big. Uh, if we compare it to the elk, So it's a little bit, the giraffe one's a little bit smaller, so I'm assuming it's a baby, a baby giraffe, because giraffes would get really, really big. Um, yeah, they also have the two things on the back, and then they also have two, their cloven hooves. Let's see, let's show you a different one. Um, oh, here's a cool one. This is from, this is the foot from, actually, try and guess what you, what it is. I'll let you guys see it up close. What do you think that is from? <laughs> Let's count the fingers or the toes. There's one, two, three, four, and then five. So a thumb, kind of. Let's see, I'll give you a couple more seconds to guess. So this is from a baboon. So it's kind of tricky, it's kind of hard to see what it's from because it's all, it's not straight really. But this is from a baboon and you, they have five fingers. You can kind of see that they look like fingers and um, they are not, it is not a hoof like this. All right, so. Oh, I'll show you one more foot and then we'll move on. So, it's a big one. <laughs> Here we have this foot. Can, does anybody want to guess what this foot is from? 
it is a very big animal. Uh, let's count the toes really fast. Let's see. There's one, two, three, and then in the back there is a fourth toe. So this animal has four toes and a very on a very big foot. Um, and it is from an elephant. So this is an elephant. Elephant feet are huge because elephants are huge animals. It is bigger than my head. That is how big the elephant foot is. But it's very cool. Um, if you want to draw what you think an elephant footprint might be, that would be kind of fun. If you look at the bottom of it, that's what the bottom of an elephant look, foot looks like. Um, it's very, very rough on the bottom uh, so that it'll keep their feet protected so nothing will, if they step on anything, uh, they probably won't even feel it because their the bottom of their foot is so rough and thick. Uh, but it's pretty cool. It's huge, it's so big. Elephant feet are huge. That's absolutely cool. Okay, so I have one more book to read, you guys. And then, that will be all for today. But our last book is called Animal Tracks by, written and illustrated by author uh, Arthur DeRose. And we are given permission to read this by Scholastic Books. Okay, let's get started. Okay. When you go into the forest, the animals may be hiding but you can tell which animals are in the forest by looking at their tracks. Who made tracks in the soft mud by the stream? So what tracks do you think are these by the stream? You can see they have, they kind of look like fingers and there are little claw marks on there, but it's kind of hard to see. So what kind of animal do you think that is? A raccoon was looking for food. Look out, crayfish, or you, or you will become a raccoon's breakfast. Who made the tracks from the reeds to the water? So the raccoon, you can see they have little hands. They use their hands to grab things. Um, and then let's see, who made these tracks? What do you think those tracks are from by the water? A family of ducks waddled from their nest in the reeds, but who made the tracks even smaller than the ducklings' feet? So right here, who made those tracks? These are from the ducks and the ducklings, but who made those? A frog made the tracks as it hopped along with small feet with, with small front feet and bigger hind feet. A turtle is warming up in the sun. Who made the tracks almost as big as the turtle? Let's see. So you can see the frog has smaller front feet and then really big back feet. And then the turtle made those tracks right there. But then there's a third track. Um, that is as big as the turtle. So who do you think made this track? Don't you kind of think maybe it looks a little like this? <laughs> like a hoof? Let's see. A deer walked to the stream to drink. Some of the tracks are not easy to see. Where an animal steps on hard ground rocks or plants, there may be no tracks or only part of a track. Who scared the deer and made the tracks up the stream bank? Hmm. Okay, so there's the tracks from the deer. And there's the deer right there. And then we have some more tracks over here on this side. So who do you think made those tracks? What do they look like? A fox takes a rabbit along the stream bank. So here we have the fox. Those little, paw, those little tracks came from the fox. Where the rabbit ran, the tracks are far apart. Uh, the rabbit popped far with each jump. The rabbit made it home this time. The rabbit made it home this time. The fox, the fox looked at her reflection in a puddle. 
whose tracks are curving lines in the mud around the puddle? Let's see, so those tracks. We got some new tracks right there. We saw this track in the other book. Does anybody remember what it is from? Oh, it's something different. Different than the snake. A worm is slithering along. Watch out worm, watch out cricket. A bird is hopping, looking for a meal. Nearby is a tree that looks as if it's been chewed. Who eats trees for lunch? So we have that little squiggly track right there and it was not from a snake, it was from a worm. And there's the little worm right there. And then we have these tracks over here. So who do you think made those tracks? They're pretty big. A porcupine ate tree bark until she was full. Then she walked away, then she walked slowly away. Porcupines do not have to move fast. Who would bother a porcupine? So those are from a porcupine. I thought they were bear tracks for a second. They kind of look like bear tracks, but I guess it's from the porcupine. Oh. The black bear wouldn't bother the porcupine. He's busy eating berries. Then he will rub and scratch on his favorite tree. The scratches show that he has been there. The scratches are called a sign. Who left another animal sign? Teeth marks on a fallen tree. So I guess these tracks are from a bear, but these are from the porcupine. So then we have porcupine tracks and bear tracks. And you can see that the bear made scratches on the tree. That's how you can also tell that an animal has been there um, by looking at marks on like the trees. So you see the bear scratched up the tree. But then we have another tree over here that was chewed up. What kind of animal do you think chews up trees? Let's see. A beaver chewed the tree to cut it down. Beavers drag branches away to build their round log home and a beaver dam. Behind the dam is a beaver pond. Who lives among the tall grasses by the beaver pond? So there's the beaver cutting down some branches and trees. There's, their, there's the dam. And then there is their lodge where they, um, where they sleep and things. That's their kind of like their home. But then we have more tracks over here. Who do you think those are from? Let's see. Ooh. A heron looks for fish to eat. Muskrats are eating grass. They leave a sign. A raft of chewed grass floating in the water. Slap! A beaver's tail hits the water, warning of danger. Who is making crackling noises in the bushes by the pond? So let's see, we have a bunch of tracks on this page. Let's see, we have a heron who made those tracks right there. Herons are really cool at birds. They're really big and they you can find them here in Utah. Well, if you look really closely, you can see some. Um, and then let's see, we have muskrats. So there's a little muskrat swimming in the water. And I think he made those tracks over here. And they make a little raft of grass. Let's see, who is making the crackling noises in the bushes by the pond? Let's find out. A dog runs along the trail followed by people. Each person leaves a different sized track. There are small tracks and larger tracks made by small feet and larger feet. So we have some people now walking on a trail. You can see their tracks and then a little dog running up further. Can you see his tracks too? Let's see. Near a lake are tracks made in sand by bare feet. Along the road are muddy tire tracks. A car is going toward a city. Cities can be good, good places to find animal tracks. There's the tracks in the sand and then the car with tire tracks going to the city. So lots of things can make tracks, not just animals. Even cars can make tracks. Let's see. Listen carefully.
carefully and look for animal signs. Snow, soft sand, mud, and dust are good places to look for tracks. Let's see, they're looking for tracks. You might even find tracks of animals that can live in cities, but usually stay hidden. Raccoons, muskrats, or opossums. Once, once people even, once people even found mountain lion tracks in a city park, be a track detective. Guess who made these tracks in a city park? Who do you think made those tracks? Right there. It was the cat. The cat made those tracks. All right, that is the end of that book. And there's a little cool thing at the end right here. It tells you how you can um, kind of save tracks. So here it tells you that you can kind of put plaster and in like the where the track is and leave it there and it'll dry. And then once it's dry, you can take it out and you can have a mold of the track. So that would be pretty cool to do. That'd be really fun. Or you can trace or draw the animal tracks. Yeah, so there's different ways that you can save tracks if you wanted to. So yeah, that is the end of that book. Uh, I just have a couple more things to show you really fast. So, let's see. In the book, they talk about bears scratching up the trees uh, and they do that so that they can mark their territory and tell other bears that they have been there. So I am going to show you something really cool. It's really heavy, uh, so let me grab it really fast. <laughs> okay. So here I have a part of a tree that has uh, bear marks on it. So these scratches right here are from a bear that was marking its territory and telling other bears to stay away. So if you look, they're really long, this one's really long, and they, go, they mark it all over the tree. And bears will also rub their backs on trees, and they do that so that they can leave their scent on the tree. And bears have very, very good sense of smell, and by rubbing their backs on the tree, they, that's another way that they can tell bears uh, that they've been there and that's their territory. So yeah, it's really cool to see. If you ever go on a hike or anything, make sure you look around for tracks or even look at the trees to see if there's any bear marks, especially if you're in um, the woods where there's a lot of bears that live. Like uh, I know Yellowstone has a lot of bears. Um, there are some places in Utah that have some bears. Um, Put that one back, and I have another one. Okay. So here's some more tracks, bear marks. There's some right there. They're kind of dark, um, and I think it's because the tree was trying to heal itself. Uh, but there's some bear marks right there. Oh, here's some on this side too. You can see them right there. They're pretty cool. So keep an eye out if you're going on a hike. And then I have one more thing to show you before we end today. And it is another part of a tree. Hold on, let me grab it. Also kind of heavy. Okay, so in the book we talked about beavers and how they will chew on trees and they do that so that they can make their dams and their lodges. And here is what kind of a chewed up tree looks like a little bit. So you can see the beaver chewed it up to where it almost broke apart. It's still connected, but the beaver chewed it up. It went completely, it went almost completely through that, this little tree and broke it in half. So that's really cool. Um, beavers have really, really big front teeth and bottom teeth. They have two teeth on the top and two on the bottom, and then they have a gap. Um, and those teeth are called incisors, and they're actually orange. 
Uh, they're orange because they have something called iron in them, and the iron makes their teeth very strong, because can you imagine trying to chew through a tree like this? <laughs> your teeth have to be really, really strong, and the iron really helps their teeth uh, become really strong. But the iron also makes their teeth orange. Um, another cool thing about beaver teeth is that they never stop growing. So beaver teeth just keep growing and growing and growing, and because of that, they have to chew on the trees. They have to chew on the trees because it helps keep their teeth short and not too long. If a beaver never chewed on the tree, then their teeth would just keep growing and growing and growing, and it would go, it, I think it would go through their head. That's how, yeah, beaver teeth will just keep growing, and they don't stop. So they have to chew on trees to keep their teeth short. So yeah, that is a little bit about animal, animal tracks. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you thought it was interesting and learned something new. So if you uh, wanna, I don't, I don't know what we're talking about next week yet, but join us next week and if you want to learn more about animals. All right, thank you everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye.